Hello. Welcome to the quick start tutorial of the Viper DIS radio by Battlespace Simulations. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Viper DIS radio. And what you see here is the default configuration. If you've ordered your Viper radio with an alternate configuration, then please refer to the documentation on that particular interface. In this case, I'll go over each of the items on the default configuration and we'll see how it operates. The DIS radio itself should work pretty much right out of the box. If you just run it, it should detect any other radios out there and make a connection with them no problem. If you are having problems with connecting, well in later video we'll go over detailed configuration for DIS. Also, I'll show you where to get the help which has a lot of pointers about how to set up the network if you are not making a connection immediately. In any case, uh, the DIS radio, the Viper radio right here, in its default configuration has the RF spectrum monitor uh, right up top. This will show you any incoming or outgoing radio traffic and you'll see a spike wherever that radio traffic is either being sent or received from about just above zero to um, about one gigahertz. We also have an all button and you will actually be able to hear all radio traffic at the same time. This lets you uh, pick out uh, maybe signals if it's very quiet out there and you just want to hear anything that's going on. In addition there is also the self. This will let you hear yourself in your headset uh, but only when you're actually transmitting so you'll uh, you'll notice that and we'll go over that in more detail when we get to headsets. There's also the Vox. The Vox will transmit once the audio reaches above a certain level and as you can see right now it's, it's transmitting here as a spike transmitting 120 megahertz. You can see the voice monitor is picking up my voice and sending it, but only on the active channel. So if the channel is not active, it's standby, the Vox doesn't transmit. This also occurs with the push to talk. When I push to talk, if I'm holding the button down, it will transmit my voice on the active channel. If you have two active channels, it will transmit on both active channels. Uh, for information about the actual channels here, I'll go through this. We have the frequency which you can enter by keyboard if you like or you can roll it up and down with the numeric up down buttons as well as you can scan for any other signals. If other signals are out there uh, it will pick them up and stop and you'll be able to listen to it. However, if somebody is talking to you on a on a channel that's already exists, that's already tuned to say 125 in this case, then it will not stop at 125. It only searches for other channels that are not already tuned to. Also, as we've already seen, the active standby button uh, will allow you to transmit whether you're using voice, push to talk, or if you set up one of your joystick buttons to transmit for you, it will also do it there. In addition, we have this instantaneous push to talk, and this will actually transmit on a frequency just while you're holding the button here and any particular channel that you choose you can transmit on uh, instantaneously. It will not transmit on any of the other active channels or anything like that. It only transmits on this one particular channel. Uh, of course we have a volume button. This is pretty self-explanatory except that the volume button really only pertains to incoming audio. It doesn't affect your outgoing audio. In addition to what you see here as the uh, standard controls, we also have a context sensitive menu. The concept, context sensitive menu brings up uh, new, open, save, additional um, items. For these, this is really saves the configuration of the radio. So if you set the audio settings, DIS settings, etc., then uh, you can save that particular configuration under your own name and you can load it at a later time. Not only that, but also if you've selected certain buttons as, uh, as states, then when you save it, those buttons will be saved in the same, in that particular state as well. Uh, audio settings, DIS settings, input settings, these are all more detailed in nature, so I'll address each of those in a separate video later on. Uh, the devices, again, something that I will address as uh, in additional videos, therefore, uh, setting up the, in this particular case, the radio, but we can contain other devices um, that we may have within the this uh, DIS uh, container. 
We also have the Viper properties. In this case, the Viper property is one of the most important things that you can bring up. Main reason is because it has the help right there. And you can see your user's manual for the Viper DIS radio and just scroll through it and it's got uh, pretty much everything I've talked about in this video and, uh, and uh, additional detailed information that you may need. Okay, so to operate the radio, I'll just go ahead and bring up a separate second Viper radio. And uh, the second Viper radio, although it's on the same machine, it will work just as well on a separate machine. Uh, but for the illustration purposes here, uh, I'll show you here. You can see already that uh, uh, the Vox is picking up my voice. It's transmitting. And what you see here is it's receiving it over here, but it's not scanning. So I'll turn off Vox just for a second. And we'll let the system scan. And when I do a push to talk and actually talk into the microphone, well, actually, when I just do a push to talk, it will instantly pick me up over here. Um, and also, of course, now that it's tuned, you can see the Vox is picking me up, and it's receiving it will instantly over here. I'll turn the turn the volume down, and I'll, of course, now that it's tuned, so that we're not bothered by you can see uh, the Vox is picking uh, me up, and the echo here. coming from. I'll turn the, the speakers. Turn the volume down. Um, of course, the most important thing about transmitting from one radio to another is the frequency. Whatever frequency you set at, that is the frequency that the other radio uh, will try and pick up. So if I transmit on this one, you notice there's no other signal that's being picked up. This, of course, is turn off the Vox there. So I'm transmitting uh, at 300 megahertz, and of course we're we see it in the RF spectrum monitor, but we're not actually receiving it. So I'll just hit the scan, and again. Now we're transmitting from this radio to this radio. And that's pretty much the basics of the Viper DIS radio. In additional videos, radio. I'll go over in-depth configuration of each device and show you how to set up many more channels if you need more than just the basic two.